welcome back to my channel. I am Victoria. I'm back with a video today. Today's video, we're going to learn the meanings of the tarot cards. Okay, so I've been reading tarot for over 25 years and um, I am a psychic tarot reader, but I do know the meanings of each of the cards right way up and reversed. So today we're going to focus on the meanings of the right way up tarot cards, the major arcana and the minor arcana and the suits. So we're going to focus on the meanings of each card today, um, the right way up. I do read reversals and I'll do reversal video, a separate reversal video because it's going to be too long. Okay, so we should start. This is a classic Raider Waite tarot deck. Okay. And um, the right away is probably the tarot deck that most people start to learn with. Okay, it's easy. And um, there are Roman numerals. So sometimes you can get a little bit confused, but it actually does educate you on Roman numerals quite a bit. It's only one to 10. So <laughs> you'll manage it. So we'll start with the fool. Okay, the fool is the first. Well, it's zero. We call it the first, but it's actually zero. Okay, when you see the Fool here within a reading, the Fool card is often symbolizes um, fresh hope or taking a chance on a situation, or it comes out as a new adventure of some kind. You can see he's just about jumping off the cliff with his dog. Okay, it's like he's looking up into the air, so he's not having a care in the world. So it's about being happy to take a new chance. Okay, that's the Fool. I'll put that out of the way. And then we have the magician. So the magician is actually the first class of the first tarot card in the deck. OK, at number one. OK, the magician is often um, about creativity, OK, or um, turning visions into reality. So this is something this is about um starting to create something okay so usually to take action and turning your dreams into um, reality if you look here he's got magic wand often this is about manifestation and um something quite um spiritual about the magician card card number two is the high priestess OK, every time I see the high priestess come out in a reading, I always think that it's something secretive is going on. She's this beautiful energy, but she is that there can be secretive energies within her. OK, she's often mysterious and it's often a card of intuition. OK. Or using your intuition. Number three is the Empress, the beautiful Empress. The Empress is usually a card of, um, she usually signifies a mother, okay? But since tarot really doesn't have gender, um, it could be someone who acts like um, good at looking after, likes to look after people, okay? She's also a good fertility card, and she's also all about peace and creation. Remember, these are all right way up meanings. I will do a separate video for reversal meanings. Um, again, because this video is going to be quite long, because it's 78 cards. She's also comes out when there's good parenting or being good parent around. We have the Emperor next to the Empress card. And this is card number four. The Emperor is often a leader, okay, and often a father figure and is is talks about respect okay also very good planner in the tarot we have card number five the hierophant the hierophant every time the hierophant can symbolize um traditions and conventional traditions um high expectations and for me it can come out as a marriage card because he looks like it's somebody who would marry you also can come out when there's religions coming about so this is about um trying to conform to something um it is a religious card for me as a reader and surrounding cards often um play an essential role here okay so somebody who's quite a leader often symbolizes religion it's a good indicator of a marriage for me as a reader. The next card after the Hierophant is the Lovers. 
Okay, so obviously we know what the lover's card is. This is card number six. And this is about partnerships, okay? Deep, deep love and strong love and about unions, okay? Now, this could be a loving union, but it have to be a romantic one in every case, depending on what you're reading for. If you look, you have two um, naked symbols here. This is about, um, can be a loving friendship or anything that requires love around it. This is a good card to have in a spread, obviously. But it's a happy card and somebody like watching over your connection as well. And we have the chariot. OK, for me, when I see the chariot in a reading, this card often symbolizes um, something that's coming to you at speed. Can signify an actual vehicle of kind. OK, so um, you have the symbol here, the symbol of the man that's taking charge of something. This is always about journeys because it is a chariot with wheels. But this is about taking charge and taking action, okay? Often comes out when someone's coming at you at speed or someone's going to travel to you or you're taking a journey yourself. We have card number eight, which is the strength card, symbolizing a lion. And obviously, a lot of people think this is a card represents the sign of Leo being the lion on it. This is about just loving yourself, unconditional love, self-respect and, of course, courage. OK. This is the Hermit, which is card number nine. The Hermit is about retreating within yourself. But the hermit, when it retreats, OK, it goes back to find the truth about the situation, about how they feel about things. OK, often it's a very spiritual card and it um, can just be about inner strength, inner spirituality as well. So you often want to find the truth out when you go for the hermit. Often it can be a card when someone just retreats for a little while and then comes back. OK, so just think often somebody will go away and think about something when they see the hermit, but they always return with an answer because they're wise. We have the Wheel of Fortune, which is card number 10 in the tarot. Obviously, the Wheel of Fortune is about good fortune. It can also be a turning point in your life because it is a wheel and it'll be turning for good. OK, can signify gambling obviously, but it's usually about money and abundance and turning point. And it's a good luck card. Um, it often comes out when things are about to get better, things are going to be better. And of course, money. <laughs> we have justice with card number 11. When the justice card comes out, you will find if you start to read tarot cards, the justice and judgment come out and justice and hierophant often come out together okay usually the when you're doing a spread it comes out with another card in the spread you will find they sort of complement each other but justice on its own means um you want the truth usually you find out the truth you just want the truth it also can be a card of um winning OK, and a card of finding a solution to situations, but usually it just means the truth comes out. Or you aspire to get the truth. OK, we have the hanged man. Please note that the, hangs man, the hanged man hangs from his foot and not his neck. OK, and I always remind people of that. But so he's not dead. OK, this card number 12. This is about um, wisdom. And often comes out when you're sacrificing yourself. So it's a self-sacrifice card. But because he hangs upside down, sometimes he comes out. It's like get a different perspective of the world because you're turned upside down. OK, so sometimes you just might have to go and see something from somebody else's point of view. We have the card death, which, of course, is number 13. Death usually can symbolise endings, OK? But when the death card comes out, and this is one that people go, oh, there's certain cards in the tarot where they're all scared of them, but the death is that one. It can mean big changes ahead. So it can be a rebirth card. So it's a moving on card. So you're not dead. You're just moving on from what's happened. So it can end, and then your transformation is about to begin, and then you will re 
you'll have like a rebirth or reborn. So it's time to move on. OK, it's about big changes. You're not actually dead or going to die in any way, shape or form, which is what I've heard people say. We have card number 14, which is temperance. This is all about balance and harmony in the tarot. Patience, self-control and everything in moderation. Every time I see um, the card temperance, I always calm down and I don't know why, especially this way up. So in the right way up, this is about balance, harmony, patience, self-control and everything in moderation. If you look, the water is flowing between the two cups and it's very symbolic. OK, so this is about calming every situation down. Number 15, the devil. OK, when the devil card comes out, this is often has several meanings of the devil. Obviously, there's a lot of nakedness on the cards. This is about sexual lust. OK, can be an obsession card, can be a greedy card or somebody who might be jealous. Often a good indicator when somebody's addicted to something or someone. Card number 16 is the tower. Now, tower is very significant, OK, because it's the card that is about upheaval. OK, so this is about the tower symbolizes change, but it can be an unwanted change. So it can be about a change that's going to happen in your life that maybe you don't want. OK, can come out when there's some kind of um, violence about or when your whole world gets sort of um, shook about a little bit. It's a it's a card of quite a lot of power because you do have your lightning strikes and your fire in the tower. But if you look very carefully at the tower, the people are jumping out. OK, which means they're escaping from the situation. So that can often come out too. Um, when I see the tower, sometimes you can be escaping from a not a very nice situation. OK, but you do get out. That's um, a re reassuring part of it. You escape because you're jumping out. The star card, number 17. I love to see the star card come out in the tarot card spreads. It often is about miracles, actually. You get, um, it's about renewal. It's about hope. It's about starting again. But it, to me, it's often about being in the spotlight. OK, it's about just having faith that everything's going to be um, getting better and can signify for me as a reader um, your outward appearance. So it's usually when you feel attractive or somebody finds you attractive. I find the star card comes out. We have card number 18, which is the moon. So the moon, every time I see the moon come out, I often think that there is intuition about. OK. Oh, that rhymed. OK, so you should need to trust your intuition when the moon comes out. A bit of illusion could be in the air and also fantasy is around. There can be unseen problems when the moon comes out. So things that you don't see that are maybe un happening underneath or can be changes, big changes in your life, but ones that you make voluntary. So trust your intuition when you see the moon come out the sun next to the moon card number 19 the sun is about material happiness it's a happy card it's joyous um it's a good outcome it's a good successful outcome card okay often symbolizes the sign of leo um if you just look at the colors on the card it's about being happy okay or something's in a spread it's often when something turns out to be good or very very good judgment okay usually judgment for me is like um a wake-up call or as the card says card number 20 it's about uh, making a decision okay often comes out with legal problems um or something similar to that okay it's about clarity it's about about making this final call final decision can be a wake-up call card as well and often comes out when you need to find out what you want in your life Card number 21 of the Major Arcana and the final card of the Major Arcana is the world. So the world comes out when you want to complete something in your life. OK, it's about completing a goal, often comes out with travel 
or are you traveling is a world card but usually you can be moving countries with this card you can meet people from other countries with the card and it's about completion which means you're coming to the end of your journey it's also quite a strong powerful card and it's the last one of the major arcana Okay, now we're going on to the minor arcana. So this is where we get the cups, the pentacles, the swords and the wands. Here we go. We have the ace of cups. The ace of cups can be anything from a new baby, new relationship or even a proposal of marriage. Because it's an ace, it's usually the start of something. And it's usually the cups energy is to do with love. Cups is also water sign energy. OK, so that's Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer is usually represented by the cups in tarot. When we have the two of cups now often referred to as the soulmate card. This is about romantic love. This is often a proposal of marriage also. Um, and you can see it's like um, a romantic partnership and can be partnerships cards love and also partnerships in all sorts of ways friendship work but usually comes out as a soulmate card three of cups friendships um often a support card but if you often with tower readers they often see it as a third party situation card as well because as you can just see the imagery there but sometimes comes out when somebody wants to go out and socialize with people and comes out as a friendship. It's a friendship card as well, or supportive of friends. Number uh, four of cups. Okay, the four of cups. If you look at the man, he's sulking, <laughs> and somebody's trying to help him. So it's a, it can be about surprise gifts or something that comes out of the blue. But usually, it's the card that comes out when somebody's feeling sorry for themselves, or they don't feel much for themselves, or they wanted more than they could have. Yeah, they're feeling sorry for themselves more than anything. Five of Cups. If you look at the imagery, they've got the cloak over their face. So this is a card is when they're feeling, um, Five of Cups comes out when someone's feeling abandoned or unloved. It can come out in grief. It's also a grief card, okay? Often symbolizes loss or regret as well. The Six of Cups. OK, I love the Six of Cups because it's nostalgia, often symbolizes um, childhood, innocence, sometimes comes out with someone. If you look, somebody's giving her a gift of flowers there. So, yeah, come out with someone's about to give you a gift of some kind. But it can represent reunions also or going back to your youth. OK, for me, it's about your um, childhood and your youth and your people that you know in your past. We have the Seven of Cups here, which is a commitment card. Now, if you see, this this man doesn't know where to turn. So this is somebody who struggles with too many choices and has commitment issues. OK, there's too much going on for them to manage. If you look at the symbolism of the cards, it's quite obvious. The Eight of Cups, somebody here is withdrawing, moving on um, and retreating. OK, so they're walking away, basically, from a situation. We have the Nine of Cups. The Nine of Cups to me is about a wish come true card. OK, it's about good health often. And it comes with um, when you're expecting, you usually get what you desire. Can come with material abundance as well, which means often it's actually quite sparkly it often comes in when you're expecting money and you're about to get money see there's more cards than just the wheel of fortune and the tower that represent money the ten of cups this ten of cups symbolizes family commitment and being really supportive and also the ten of cups is the final card in the um minor arcana number the number 10 okay so 10 is often about completion so you're coming on your journey here often a card of happy marriage or family family contentment now we have royalty we have the page of cups page of cups often represent pages often represent um children in tarot okay and the page of cups ever represents a either a new love or a beautiful loving child or can represent you helping somebody okay 
we have the Knight of Cups. Now, I call this the Prince Charming card. The Knights move fast in tarot, okay? Just keep that in mind. All the Knights are fast movers in tarot. The Knight of Cups is romantic. So he's bringing you a romantic, he or she is bringing you romance and a romantic proposal. Often pay particular attention to the Cups the queens and the knights in tarot because they're pointing in different ways, okay? In spread, they're significant to the way they're pointing and their card next to it and before it. When you see the knights that way, it's pointing in a different direction, okay? But we'll do that in the reversal video that I will do coming up in a couple of days. We go for the queen of cups. Well, there she is. She's nurturing, she's healing, she's supportive and she's loving, beautiful queen of cups and she's beautiful usually as well we have the king of cups now the kings are always leaders and supportive in tarot okay the king of cups is about empathy and tolerance and is also a loving leader now we shall go on to the suit of pentacles often symbolizes the earth signs which is taurus virgo and capricorn we have the ace of pentacles okay pentacles symbolizes usually financial in the tarot okay so it's a money thing it looks like a money it looks it is money okay so ace of pentacles often symbolizes the start of something which could be a new job new money new investments and even a rise to do with your job two of pentacles now if you look he's juggling a lot of things so he's trying to multitask so there's a lot they usually uh, two of pentacles is deciding on something they usually have two choices when the twos come out in tar tarot okay so it's about having a choice between going that way or that way they're weighing up you're weighing up your options we have the three of pentacles here, right? The threes are often about teamwork, okay? So if you're going for a new job, maybe you need to ask others in your work or something like that, okay? Often comes out when somebody, you notice they're trying to, that man there is building something. He's a stonemason, it looks like. So he's, cra he's crafting something, okay? So this is when you work at something and you might need others' help to help you. Four of Pentacles, security, okay? This is security in all its forms, but this is long-term security card. Can be um, a greedy card. You notice how the, the person is showing you money, okay? He's on his head and he's standing on it too, which means he wants it. So it can be greedy, okay? But this is usually a desire for long-term security and a security card financial and otherwise depending on what you're reading for now we have the five of pentacles five of pentacles is always interesting to me because this person is walking away with his little friend and he's not well okay so it can be ill health because he's on crutches but it can be just um feeling isolated or lonely often five of pentacles comes out when somebody's lost money of some kind a financial loss of kind but it's often about poverty and worrying about money the six of pentacles is about, well, if you look at the imagery, he's giving out money. So this is about someone being generous or you being generous. Often you can be giving or receiving help with this card. It's either someone's going to come in to help you or you've got to help somebody else. So it's a generosity card. We have the seven of pentacles. This is about patience and hard work. Okay. And this is about waiting for your success. Little bit can be delayed with the seven of pentacles, but success is coming. But you just have to wait for it. So it's about being patient. The eight of pentacles. Eight of pentacles is about enjoying yourself, but enjoying what you've worked for. OK, so. When you master your craft, it's about getting it perfected, you know, getting it perfected and right so you can enjoy enjoy what the fruits of your labor we have the nine of pentacles nine of pentacles again for me when i see it is about 
self-care looking after yourself she comes out when she, well i say she but the card comes out when there's luxury around when somebody can gain from something it's pleasure card and it's often a card of great beauty so when i see the star or the the um nine of pentacles come out i always think somebody um finds you very attractive as well The Ten of Pentacles is all about family, okay? It can be an inheritance. It's about um, leaving a, a legacy of some kind and can symbolise retirement, okay? Also, I think that it, for me, as a Ten of Pentacles is about um, building a family and it's completing a family, okay? So you usually complete when you see a Ten. Next card, we go into the... Oh, we've got the Page of Pentacles. Okay, here comes royalty. So we have the Page of Pentacles here. This is also about new job. Um, can be money news because you can see the Page of Pentacles is giving... Um, here's, the, here's your money, basically, it's saying. Um, it also represents children. Pages represent children. and can be patience and usually a very mild-tempered tempered child. Can be... Um, money news but watch again what the cards next the page of pentacles whether the pentacles is giving the money or taking it off you okay on the cards next to it next card the knight of pentacles again knights are fast movers in the tarot this knight of pentacles is often reliable okay Patience and hard working. Now, pentacles energy, you noticed much slower coming towards you, but they do come towards you. They make plans and they'll be at your side because they're sturdy, but comes at a slower pace. The queen of pentacles. She's beautiful. She represents fertility. OK, she represents the home um, can be a mother figure. But again, reliability. So there'll be the, the Knight Queen of Pentacles is there when you need them. The King of Pentacles. Okay, often King of Pentacles knows what they're doing. Okay, they're solid, they're practical, they're a leader, and they invest their money wisely. The next suit is the suit of swords. So we should start with the Ace of Swords. Okay, there it is. Ace of Swords is often, well, if you look at it, it's about cutting through the bullshit, basically. So it can represent a new idea. Okay, it can be a card of surgery. So an operation or anything like that. It can be about cutting through that foggy cloud. So it's mental clarity and um, it can often represent a new conflict because the way the sword is the right way up. It's ready for something. Yeah. Swords energy often represented the sign of an air sign. So that's Aquarius, Libra. And I always forget the other one, Gemini. OK, and often a sign that is ready for it, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, your mind is clear. It's mental clarity that you get with the Ace of Swords. Two of Swords. OK, this is usually a card of compromise or making a decision. So it's time for you to either compromise or make a decision with the Two of Swords. So you either go one way or another. You see? Three of Swords. Now, this card is really interesting because the Three of Swords actually represents heartbreak. OK, it can come out when someone has is going to break up or is broken up or div uh, divorced. It can come out with depression or a loss of some kind, often represents surgery again. The Four of Swords is about just rest as that they are here yeah so he's lying down resting so it's about rest and renewing yourself but when you want to spend time on alone or when a person wants to spend time by themselves this comes out just to rest and recover from the situation the five of swords the five of swords is about well usually about um somebody who steals can be violent okay and somebody who's quite well he's just He's a battler, you know, he's won in battle. So someone who's a bully as well, who thinks they've won. 
Can you see these people? He's probably just struck these people down. So this card is not a person who's very nice when this comes out. It's often to represent somebody who's stolen from you, is a bully and can represent abusive relationships. The Six of Swords. Often the Six of Swords is about a necessary transition. OK, it can be a relocation card or it can represent moving. OK, you see the way they they're moving with their backs turned. So they're leaving usually. OK, because they could be leaving, depending on the cards next to them, where are they going? You know, they could be leaving for the better. Not just leaving because they had to. Where are we? We have the Seven of Swords. Again, if you look, what is he doing? He's stealing swords. So he's a thief. OK, so usually somebody that runs away can be dishonest or has betrayed you and is often a thief. The Seven of Swords. The Eight of Swords. Now, if you look, this is when someone has imprisoned themselves. OK, so self-imposed imprisonment. Usually you've done it yourself. You restrict yourself. You isolate yourself or basically it can represent prison. Within a reading. The Nine of Swords. Well, the picture of the swords is quite obvious. It's quite easy to read because this is about um, not being able to sleep. Um, bad dreams, often nightmares, can be a grief card, a depressive card or representing anxiety. OK, interesting Ten of Swords opposite, often comes out when something is completely finished. OK, and it can it's not a very nice card. If you look it's like you can be stabbed in the back or a, a relationship ending. Um, usually it's when you feel rock bottom. OK, it's not it's not like it's when everything just stops. So it's ended. OK, often represents back pain. OK, so bear that in mind. Somebody met who has this card may have back problems also. The Page of Swords. Little Spy. My Little Spy of the Tarot. Page of Swords is often a spy, nosy, a gossip. It can be a child because it's a page that's just curious. And usually it can be a card of truth or trying to get to the truth. Pay particular attention to the way it's facing in the tarot. It can be two-faced as well because it's got the sword one side and looking in the other direction. So you'll be telling you one bit of information of facing the other person, so spreading it around. We have the Knight of Swords, the fastest mover in the deck for me. He charges a warrior, okay? This is a fast person. Fast talking, fast thinking, fast moving, fast talk, um, change of lifestyle. And um, this is somebody who's coming at you very quickly. We have the Queen of Swords. Now pay again particular attention to the page, the knight and the queens of the minor arcana because they point in different directions. So when she's reversed, she's going the other way. So if you look, her hand is out. OK, so she's got a bare hand there and she's got a sword in the other. So watch her. OK, she's a she's um strict, self-sufficient, but wants total honesty. So never, never lie to the Queen of Swords. OK, she knows exactly what she's doing and she always comes at you with a plan. She's always got a plan in her hand. If you look, she'll shake your hand with one and stab you with the other if she has to. So don't lie to the Queen of Swords. And we have the King of Swords. Now, he is a leader. OK, he's strategic. He plan. I think if he was an, um, planning a battle, he'd plan it like down to the T. Usually he's um, makes the King of Swords make sure they're the leader in the tarot. OK, if they're not the leader, they work their way to being up to there. Often strategic in thought and thought processes everything to the King of Swords. And don't forget respect because they're a king. And the queen, it's the same thing. You respect them both. Next suit, 
the ace of wands so the ace of wands often represents fire signs okay so that's leo aries and sagittarius so we have the ace of wands here very interesting card everybody starts giggling when they see the ace of wands but often the, <laughs> the ace of wands is a great fertility card okay um if you're trying for a child but it can represent inspiration or a new project so it's again like the magician it's a creative card and when this comes out it's telling you to get creative basically we have the two of wands okay i have lost my two of wands in the raider weight deck okay so i'm using one from the legends tarot i have no idea it is and i think i've dropped it downstairs somewhere and i'll find it later but still the same thing the two of wands is about making two decisions but you're waiting to make the right choice often two of wands symbolizes travel so when you see two of wands come out either someone's coming to you or you're going to them so it can be travel plans okay but you're waiting for something with the two of wands three of wands again this is about expansion and a great travel card okay so again it can represent um commerce money and things like that often teamwork as well so often if you look he's got you they've got the back turned and just waiting for an opportunity to travel an opportunity to come their way or an opportunity just to spring into action but often it can symbolize teamwork as well we have the four of wands and i love this card because for me if you look at it it's a wedding so it's a celebration of some kind okay it could be friendships reunions celebrations wedding christening birthday um homecomings anybody that comes back to you uh, but it's a happy card and it's always about you know you want to see people it's a social card and it's about celebrations Yippee! <laughs> the next card we have is the Five of Wands, which represents, um, oh, well, look, they're having a battle. So they're um, challenges, they're fighting, it's rivals, it's obstacles, can represent sports of some kind, okay? So if somebody plays sports a lot, this could be what it is. It's um, using your body, it's willpower, it's all of those things. Or getting rid of someone. <laughs> it's about rivals and challenges and obstacles. But you're fighting them off if you look. We have the beautiful Six of Wands, which is about good news coming for you, success. It's recognition, it's about um, people praising you, and it's about winning something, okay? The Six of Wands. We have the Seven of Wands here, which is about self-defense, okay? So um, it's like if anyone attacks you, you've got that wand up ready to protect yourself. So it's about protection card. It's about defending what is yours and anybody that is attacking you, you're defending, you're fighting them back or fighting them off. We have the eight of wands. If you look at the eight of wands, it always reminds me of um, um, they're coming at you at a fast pace. They're, sh they're shooting at you. OK, again, watch which way they're pointing. So you go that way. News is coming okay so it's speed and action and change and news arriving and something fast is about to happen or your life is about to change but usually often represents a piece of news or a piece of information that's coming really quickly the other way around depending on which cards either side okay we'll read reversals again but it means something different again it's the same sort of thing but it does mean um frustrations and problems and delays because it's all it doesn't look right does it anymore but that way around it's speed nine of wands okay this is like protecting your space so this is about boundaries and not giving up and keeping and maintaining stuff and um you know just standing your ground okay a strong card but it means standing your ground then we have the ten of wands which can be just too much going on can represent stress exhaustion or just too much to do okay ten again is of completion okay so you've got a ten here as well 
So it's just like, oh, I've got too much going on card. Now here comes royalty. We've got the page of wands. So the page of wands is someone that's a child that's often fiery and active. OK, um, it can be a new project again, like the ace of wands. But it can represent a creative idea or the, the urge to create something new. One fiery child <laughs> going on there. We have the beautiful Queen of Wands. Now she's feisty. And you don't want to get on the wrong side of her temper. OK, but she's the right way up. So she's safe. So she's confident. OK, she's self-assured and she's a good leader. She's a queen. So demands the respect that she deserves. OK, feisty, feisty energy and fiery energy as well. We have the Knight of Wands, OK? The Knight of Wands, again, is a feisty person. Remember, the Knights are fast movers, OK? Not as fast as the Knight of Swords, but still fast. Moves with confidence, OK? Feisty Knight of Wands, but very confident and wants, like, it's, it knows what they're doing is self-assured, OK? And here we have the last card, the King of Wands, OK? This King of Wands is a bold leader, um, charming, courageous and um, powerful in the tarot. So if you see a King of Wands coming out, often fiery and knows exactly what they're doing, but they are the boss, OK? They're charming, powerful and courageous, Again, pay particular attention to the way they point, King of Wands, because the right way up is that way. You don't want to get on the wrong side of them when they're this way. OK, I shall do a reading about reversals in the next video. So if you enjoyed that, I think I will try and time stamp the suits. I will try. So if you enjoyed that, that is the meaning of the suits and the minor, sorry, the major and the minor arcana in the tarot cards. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope um, it helped you um, if you're thinking of learning tarot yourself or get a better understanding of the tarot cards. Thank you so much for listening to the video today. Please subscribe to the channel if you will and check out the reversals videos, the reversal video in a couple of days time. Thank you so much and bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.